Hi guys, it's me, Trudy Lee. How's everybody doing today? It got chilly today, you guys. It is uh, about 50 degrees right now. It's about as warm as it's probably going to get today. And tonight it's going to probably be lower than freezing. It's going to be 28, 29 degrees. So here I was bragging about how warm it was. And of course, you know, when I do that, cold air comes in and reminds me of it's still winter. But uh, hopefully these next couple of days will be the last of it. Um, I'm looking ahead at the weather and it says that after, I guess, this weekend, we should be in 70 and 80 degree weather for the next 10 days. So cross your fingers. I hope so. I don't know if y'all can hear that. That's that little puppy my daughter decided she needed another dog. And she's over here today. So there's that puppy crying in there playing. But I got a story to tell y'all. So this is story time. Now I know, I, I never really know right before I turn on the camera what's going to come out. I'm, I know now what is going to come out, but right, you know, until I talk to Spirit and start having a conversation with Spirit, I really don't even know what's going to come through. So it's story time. Every time I tell a story, I learn something new about myself. So it's a, it's a good way for you to learn about yourself also. And journaling is a good way also um, for you to learn about yourself and kind of put things together. So there's a little lesson in every story that you tell. And, you know, after, after telling stories, things make a lot more sense to me. They make better sense to me anyway. So we have all had lives that we live as male and female. And I really believe that my last life that I um, had was a male. Because I came in uh, to this life feeling like a male. I just, you know, I felt very, very connected to males. Um, I, I, I was a tomboy up until a certain point, And I just felt very male. I don't know. I was a tomboy. Um, now, I don't think I mentioned to you that I like to run around without a shirt on. <laughs> that was when I was really, really young, though. Probably, you know, just uh, maybe early school, maybe first grade or something, and before that. And I, you know, I like to run around without clothes on, too. I can remember that also, but that's another thing. But uh, I, I didn't like to wear a shirt. And I had a brother, and he didn't have to wear his shirt, so why would I have to wear mine? We were 14 months apart, you know. So anyway, I remember this time uh, that my parents had decided they were going to take us to the park, right? So there's four of us kids. I don't believe my other sister was born yet because we're eight years apart. So four children, and they decided to take us to the city park. Uh, it, was a, it was a little ways away from our house. Uh, we had to travel by car to get there, but it was a really big park. It had the really nice big slides and merry-go-rounds and swings. We were always really excited to go there. So uh, they said, okay, everybody, you know, we're going to the park, get ready, get in the car. My father, you know, get shoes on. And I had no shirt on. And my mother said, go get your shirt on. And I said, no, I'm going without my shirt. And she said, fine, get in the car. She let me go without my shirt on. <laughs> and, uh, Remember, I had that pixie cut, really short hair and everything, so I might have looked like a little boy. But uh, I didn't have a shirt on. And I remember, you know, I was a stubborn little girl. Uh, I went to the park, and I remember playing and uh, doing my thing and swinging. And I remember I went to the slide. And as I was walking towards this slide, I noticed people were looking at me. I noticed... I was getting a lot of looks. I never had felt, um, you know, felt like this before. I'd never uh, felt like, you know, what, what it feels like when people are judging you and looking at you. Um, and I'm, I'm sure they knew that I was a little girl, even though, you know, I had the same shape as a little boy's body. But I'm sure they knew I was a little girl because my mother used to sew clothes for us all the time. She was a fantastic seamstress. She still is, if she wanted to. Um, so she could, I'm sure. But she used to make a lot of our clothes for us. And she would make simple little shorts and matching little shirt outfits and stuff. And I believe that was one of the pair, that was the clothes that I had had on, was a matching shirt and shorts. So I had left the shirt at home, but I had the shorts on. I think they were like little watermelons or something. 
or, you know, it was kind of pinky colored. So it was a girl short, so one boys. So that, you know, even though I had short hair, it was simple to see that obviously I was a, I was a girl. <laughs> And uh, after, after noticing that people were looking at me, I decided to go get in the car. I was embarrassed. So I believe I was five or six years old, something like that. And I became very self-conscious about my own body for the very first time in my life, honestly. And I got in the car and just hid on the, you know, and the bottom on the on the mat at the bottom of the car, the floorboard of the car, and the floor mat. I remember getting down behind the chair and just getting as far down as I could. But obviously, my parents were watching me, kind of what I was doing. Mom comes over to the car, you know, and she tells me, "What are you doing?" And I said, "I," don't, you know, she could tell that I was embarrassed, and she knew she she probably knew this was going to happen, and she wanted me to face the music or something because I I didn't listen to her and put on my shirt. I'm sure, um, and she told, she tried to coax me out. She said, nobody's looking at you. Nobody's watching. Come on out. There's nobody here at the park. I look, I see people right away. I see people at the park and I was like, hey, hell no. <laughs> I ducked back down and I'm in the car and I'm like, I'm not getting out, not leaving. She could, there's no way she could have made me get out. I would have screamed and hollered and thrown a fit if she would have tried it, I'm sure. But, uh, she just let me, she let me be and not you know, not long after that, um, we were all leaving the park. So, yeah, I, I learned a lesson. I felt such shame and I wanted my shirt so badly. I remember the whole ride home wishing that I had my shirt. I was just wishing that my mother had grabbed my shirt for me or something. You know, I wanted my shirt on so bad. I felt so uncomfortable. And that was the first time I was really self-conscious about myself. But I did, you know, learn a lesson that day, uh, and I regretted not being dressed properly. Uh, and the weird thing is, I can remember um, after that time, all through grade school, I can remember not feeling comfortable in short sleeves or no sleeves. I never ever. And, and, and you know, until I told the story to you guys, I never put that together. But this had a profound effect on me where I didn't feel comfortable anymore, you know, showing my bare arms or anything. It I think it triggered that shameful feeling that I felt, that embarrassment that I felt. Um, now, it's, cl it's crystal clear. <laughs> I was stubborn. I didn't listen, you know, so... This, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like PTSD, you know, it's kind of funny, but I never, you know, I can always remember telling my mom, I want some long sleeves, buy me long sleeve. I need, you know, I need, I wanted at least quarter length sleeves or, or long or short sleeves to be a little bit longer. You know, I never felt comfortable. And right now I'm looking back and I'm thinking, oh, I think that's why, because I went through that. And, uh, yeah, anyway. Lesson learned, I guess, right? <clears throat> now, as as a young as a young person, a young girl, I always got along better with boys. In uh, junior high, I hung out with boys. Um, not not so much as in school, but uh, outside of school. You know, boys are, were always doing something. They were creative and active and outside and. I liked being outside and my, my, my mother um, had made us stay outside while we were little children. She'd always made us go out and play. So, you know, that I'd like being outside. I still do. I love the sunshine feeling on me. But, um, you know, I just, I don't know. I just uh, felt like boys were easier to be with and deal with. And they did the things that I enjoyed doing, you know, when other girls didn't really want to do what I wanted to do. So... I always had a good rapport, good uh, relationship with boys. So, you know, that was one of the things that made me feel more like a tomboy and more like a boy. It's because I just got along really good with them. But I had a, I told you before, I believe, that I had a, a motorcycle and that we would um, ride motorcycle every day after school, on weekends. 
I had to share the motorcycle with my little brother. He was 14 months apart, but he was constantly in trouble. Um, and he would get grounded from the motorcycle all the time. Um, he would wreck the motorcycle. He was haphazard with it. And I don't know, he was always in trouble. And my mother would tell him, you're not riding that motorcycle. You can't, and she wouldn't let him do it. And so I got more time on the motorcycle than he did, I'm sure. But I was a little bit older too. So that she may have been trying to steer him away from it. Which I'll tell y'all another story about him. He ended up having a terrible wreck on a motorcycle. Anyway, um, you know, me and the boys, we would go motocrossing and we'd go in ditches and fields and pastures. We would just have so much fun. So, so much fun. It was just so freeing to be able to get up and go and do whatever you wanted to do. You know, one of the boys would always have a little bit of money in his pocket. I would save my lunch money so that I could put gasoline in my motorcycle. So lunch was like 35 cents. And I could take, you know, a couple of days of, uh, I think even 35 cents would give me a lot of gas back in those days, you know. So I could just save my lunch money and have enough gasoline to run around, do whatever I wanted to do. So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And I don't, I, I don't know how my mother stood it because as soon as I, like on a Saturday, as soon as I could get out of the house, do all my chores, get them all done, as soon as I could... I would leave on my motorcycle and not come back until it was dinner time. You know, we're supposed to all be back in the house by dinner time, so I would stay out as long as I could. And I would do that on, even on school days that I was allowed to go ride my motorcycle, I would, you know, ride it until it was time to come home for dinner time or right before it was going to get dark, I'd come home. And, um, I wasn't a bad girl in school by no means, um, but, I don't know. I, I always had a little bit of a problem with authority. I never really respected authority a lot. My father tried to instill that in me. I know he did because he talked to me about it before. And tell, he told me there was there's always going to be authority in your life you're, that you're always going to have to respect. No matter what, when you go to work, school or anything, there's gonna you're always going to have somebody above you that has authority. But even though he had told me that many times, I always had an issue with being told what to do by anybody. I just had an attitude. And I remember there came a time I had a teacher that I actually liked a lot and I didn't do my homework or something. And he said that I needed to stay after school because I didn't, I hadn't done my homework. And I was like, mm, no, nah, nah, I can't do that because you know, I had to go ride my motorcycle and that was interfering with my fun. I didn't like that. So whatever he told me, because I liked him so much, I didn't think he would, you know, give me any trouble. But uh, he told me to, you know, I had to go to detention, and I didn't, I didn't go, I didn't show up. And then he told me I had another, I had two detentions, and I didn't go to him, you know. And he was like, "Now you got to go to the office. You're going to the, you're going to the office because, you know, I, whatever he told me to do, I wasn't doing it." So when I got to his class that day, he sent me to the vice principal's office. Vice principal uh, told me that I had to go to detention that day. He said, you've got to go to detention. You have two detentions now, and you've got to go to after-school detention. Now, after talking to my boys, they told me, all you got to do is take pops. You can take pops, and then you don't have to go to the detention. He gives us boys pops, and we don't go to it. He'll just hit us, you know, with the paddle, and it's done, and you don't have to stay there for, you know hour and a half, two hours after school. I was like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So instead of going to detention that day, I went straight home, changed my clothes, got on my motorcycle, drove it back up to the school, went into his office and said, give me pops. And I was, I was a little bit of a smarty pants. I have to tell y'all. I, And he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to give me pops. He said, no, you're going to have to stay for detention. And I said, you need to treat me just like you would one of the boys. I want you just give me pops because I'm not staying for detention and you should treat me the same. I should be treated just as equal as a boy. Women's right. <laughs> right? Women's right. So he said, okay. He got out the paddle and I don't know what they do now, but back in those days, it was a big old long wooden paddle. It was, it was, you know, like as long as a ruler, at least 12 inches long, it was long. 
And uh, he said, bend over, you know, bend over and touch your knees or something. And I bent over and he, pow, he hit my butt with that pop. It smarted. I mean, it really smarted. Stung my eyes, stung. Oh, it was terrible. And then another one right behind it. Oh my gosh, you guys. There was one thing that I hadn't counted on. And that was my dignity. I was so humiliated that this grown man had hit me so hard. You know, I, my father never hit me, never. My mother, she hit us all the time with anything she could get her hands on. My father never laid a hand on me, never. I mean, he was, he was such a sweet man. Oh my gosh, my, my eyes were stinging, my butt was stinging, and I got out of that office as quick as I could. I just, I didn't even look at him in the face. I didn't want him to see my face. You know, I couldn't even look at him. I just turned around and ran out of his office and got on my motorcycle and rode off. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was so angry. I was so angry, and you know, I did not like that man after that. I, I believe his name was Mr. Dalton. And, you know, you always see the vice principal in a junior high setting. He's always, like, walking around. At least in my, in my day, they was. He was always walking around and talking to the kids and going through the lunch and all that. You would see him here and there. Um, and I didn't like him. After that, I did not like him at all. <laughs> but he taught me a lesson. To be careful what you ask for, you just might get it. Right? And I learned real quick that I would rather be treated like a lady than a man. <laughs> and that changed my perspective from that day on. You know, I had all the friends that were boys, uh, I noticed that I could basically get them to do anything for me. And, you know, that, that really changed things for me at that time. It really did. So um, one of the, my very, very dear friends... He passed away quite a few years ago now, but uh, I used to ride motocross with him. We used to do a lot of things together, and uh, I, I just enjoyed his friendship so much, but we were just friends, you know, we're just friends. He was, I think he was about two years older than me, so, but he was a, he was a really special friend, and, you know, I loved him as a friend. I at, at some point, I know he wanted to be more than just friends with me, but he was one of those little player boys, you know, and I don't know. I knew that about him because we were such good friends, and I had been like a buddy to him. I knew all the things that he'd done with girls and stuff, and I was like, I'm not a part of that. I don't want to be a part of that. Other people didn't understand my perspective, but I knew him too well. Anyway, he passed away, and he's with me. I can call on him, and he's with me. And he gives me strength. He really does. And he really helps me with healing sessions. His hand comes out, and it just, you know, he's there. He's there every time I call on him. He was a um, very physically fit young man. He had big old muscles and everything. He was like a little Arnold Schwarzenegger. He really was. He lifted weights and everything. So he was really strong. And I remember him saving me quite a few times on my motorcycle. I remember we decided to go up a really super steep hill. And it was my first time doing it. He'd taken me out to this hill. He had his motorcycle. I had mine. There was other boys too. And we were going to go up this steep hill. And he said... Well, the first time that you go up this hill, I'm going to ride on the back of your motorcycle just in case, you know, you need some help. And thank goodness he was on the back of my motorcycle because it was so steep that my motorcycle was going backwards. I was holding the handles. I would have flipped backwards. He shifted his weight on top of me and on top of my motorcycle and kept my tire down and kept me from, you know, killing myself. Basically, it was a really tall hill, really big steep tall hill and it was some place we shouldn't have been we had um we had crossed under a fence it was a fenced in area property so you know people didn't get hurt obviously but 
anyway, he saved me that day. And he saved me a bunch of times by telling me, don't do that. <laughs> you know, because he knew how much strength it took to control your motorcycle and everything. And I was just a daredevil. And, uh, you know, he was a daredevil too, but he knew the, he knew my limits when I didn't. So I always, 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 I'm so thankful that he was a part of my life because I had such a great time with him and he was so loving and caring. I love you, Jody. I love you, love you, love you. And I hope you guys have, you know, a special friend in your life that you, you know, can reminisce with or, um, that you had when you were growing up, you know, somebody special. I hope you guys had that too. So anyway, that's my story for today. All these little stories, you know, add up to who we are. All these, you know, experiences and things that we've gone through in our life, they really make us who we are. So me sharing this with you can give you a perspective on who I am and how I came to become me. And as I tell you the, these stories, it kind of unfolds for me too. I see things in a different way, so it's very interesting. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. God bless you guys. And if you'd like to get a healing session, reading, um, chakra balancing, energy work, I'm here for you anytime, okay? So I'll leave my email down below. If you want to contact me, just click on the email. Love you guys. Do something kind for somebody. It'll always come back to you. Until next time, see you later. Bye for now.